In this video, we're going to be looking at calculating break-even. We'll also look at target profit and degree of operating leverage. So in our scenario, we're going to continue to use a table of variable and fixed costs, and we will have to fill in some data that we don't know. And then from that data, we're going to calculate various different pieces of information. We will calculate the break-even points in units and revenue. We will also calculate the target units to sell in order to earn a specific level of profit. And we will look at how the degree of operating leverage helps you in predicting profit and loss. So here is our scenario. This works very similarly to another video that I've done. But basically, in this problem, we have been given some data and we are asked to fill in the rest of the pieces of information based on those few small elements. So in this case, we have been given, under the 2,500 units scenario, we have been given variable costs of $1,500,000 and we have been given fixed costs for the year of $700,000 for a total cost of $2.2 million. So from there, we are figuring out how all of the rest of this is filled out. So for example, in step one, the fixed costs are the same for all levels of output. So that $700,000 would go under the 2,000 unit scenario as well as the 3,000 unit scenario. Then we take the $1.5 million of variable costs and we divide by the units of 2,500 and we get $600 as our variable cost per unit. Now, once we have calculated that, and here's step two, in step three, the variable costs per unit are the same for all levels of output. So that $600 goes both for the 2,000 units here and the 3,000 units here. Now what we can do in step four is we take that variable cost per unit, multiply it by the 2,000 units in that first scenario, and we get $1.2 million to go here. Then we take $600 variable cost per unit times the 3,000 units, and we get 1.8 million, and that goes there. Then in step six, we take the $700,000 of fixed costs divided by the 2,000 units, and we get $350 per unit for that scenario. And then again, we take 700,000, divide by 2,500, and we get 280 here. And then 700,000 divided by 3,000, we get $233.33 there. So that's how we actually take some knowns, fill out the unknowns, and now we have the table that has all of our variable costs and fixed costs and the variable costs and fixed costs per unit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this product and we're going to say, okay, we're selling it for $2,000. And so we're going to prepare a contribution margin income statement. So what we're doing here is this $2,000 that we sell the products for, we take that 2,000 and multiply it by the 2,000 units. That gives us sales revenue of $4 million. And we're doing the same thing here. So this 5 million is the 2,000 times 2,500 units. And the 6 million is 2,000 times 3,000 units. Now we're taking variable costs. So before, where we had the variable cost per unit of $600, it's the same in every scenario. So we take that $600 and multiply it by the units in the scenario. So here it's $600 times 2,000 units. That gives us $1.2 million. And the same here, we take $600 times 2,500 units and we get 1.5 million. And here we take $600 times 3,000 units and get 1.8 million. The contribution margin is the difference between the sales revenue minus the variable costs. So in this case, it gives us $2.8 million. But we do the same calculation all the way across. Then we subtract out of that contribution margin the fixed costs. So each line would have fixed costs of $700,000. So our net operating income is the contribution margin minus the fixed costs 
gives us our net operating income. And that's the exact same formula all the way across for the different scenarios. Now what we want to do is calculate break-even point in units and in sales revenue. So in order to do a break-even in units, we take the total fixed cost. We already know that to be $700,000. And we divide by the unit contribution margin. So in this case, per unit, we're selling it for $2,000 and our variable costs per unit is $600. So our unit contribution margin is $1,400. So $700,000 divided by 2,000 minus 600 or $1,400 gives us 500 units is our break-even point. Our break-even in sales revenue, we take the break-even units of 500 and we multiply it by the sales price of $2,000. So we need sales revenue of $1 million in order to break even. Now in this question, what it's asking you is that if you sold 650 units last year without performing any calculations, would you have made a profit? And the answer is yes, because you have exceeded the break even units. So when we're looking at that, we want to compare it to, we know we need to have 500 units to break even. So Anything above 500 units will yield us a profit. Now, the next thing we want to look at is, let's calculate the number of units that the company must sell in order to earn a $50,000 profit. So in order to do this, we take the total fixed costs plus the target profit, and we divide by the unit contribution margin. That unit contribution margin is what we calculated before in the break-even units. We're taking the $2,000 sale price minus the variable cost per unit. So 2,000 minus $600 is $1,400. So we take our 700,000 total fixed costs, add the $50,000 profit we wanna make, and divide by that $1,400 unit contribution margin. And we get 535.7 units so basically we need 536 units sold in order to make a $50,000 profit. Now let's calculate the degree of operating leverage if the company sells 2,100 units. So we have 2,100 units, our unit contribution margin is $1,400. We know that we've gotten that from the $2,000 sales price minus the $600 variable unit cost. So our contribution margin is the $1,400 times the 2,100 units. That gives us $2.94 million. We subtract from that the $700,000 in fixed costs gives us a net operating income of $2.24 million. To calculate our degree of operating leverage, we take that contribution margin of $2.94 million and divide by the net operating income of $2.24 million. That gives us a degree of operating leverage of 1.3125. So let's see what this means after we have calculated this degree of operating leverage. We can use this to take a look at, okay, what would be the change in profit if sales were 20% less or 20% more than expected, okay? So that the effect on profit is calculated as the change in sales. So whether or not we're looking at a 20% less than what we expected or 20% more, the change in sales would be 20%. And the degree of operating leverage, we use what we calculated in the previous calculation. We use the 1.3125. So when we multiply those two numbers together, we get a percentage of 26.25%. So if we anticipate that sales are going to be 20% more or 20% less than we expected, then we will actually have a 26.25% decrease or increase in profit. So that 20% decrease in sales is actually resulting in a slightly higher decrease or increase in profit overall. 
So hopefully that helps in understanding what some of these concepts can do for us and how to do these calculations. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And I look forward to seeing you on another video.